Welcome to the Influential CEO. This is where visionary founders become revolutionary leaders, elevating your legacy of impact while enjoying the ride. Welcome to another episode of the Influential CEO Podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Rasky. Of course, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you are enjoying the podcast. And of course, if you want the podcast in your pocket, be sure to download the Influential app available on all platforms. I am so excited to be joined by Zach Siegel today because we are going to be talking some deep stuff. And just in our pre-conversation, we've already set the stage of just going, we're just going right for the jugular on some real shit today. So be prepared. <laughs> He's got quite a story to share. He's doing some epic, amazing things in his life and in his business. He's actually one of the people that I've recently partnered with as well. So you'll get to hear about all of that magic um, that he's bringing in the world to help make the world a better place because people can get access to funding, which is such a bottleneck for so many people. Zach, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure. You know, when we first talked and, you know, we had that call where we decided like, you know, we're going to partner together. I'm going to help you get your customers financing so they can uh, invest in themselves and, and improve their lives. Right. I was like, I need to talk to this woman more. <laughs> like I, I got that feeling that, um, you know, this, this chick like Stacy, she's very smart. She's, she's obviously got a story herself. Um, because you don't get to this state of mind. You don't get to this state of subconscious consciousness or, or like being subconscious of your subconscious without having a story, right? right. Me, I'm so conscious of my subconscious and I know that everybody that's on that same level has been through some fucked up stuff. It's so true. <laughs> we've all been, we've earned the right to be at that level of being. Right. Right, where it's integrating all of those layers. And, you know, I mean, we're 51% light, 49% dark. And if we can be in that place of integrating both sides and showing up in our fullness and our authenticity and balance, and, you know, that's what creates the influence, then the impact we want to make in the world. So, all right, let's start with um, what, tell me about your business. Tell me about, you know, who you serve, how you serve them, how you're showing up in the world, and then we'll get into the juicy backstory. Sure. So my business is the Small Biz Heroes. We're a business lending marketplace. So we help companies get startup financing, SBA loans, uh, lines of credit, um, 0% credit cards. We also can assist with consumer financing say you're a coach or, you know, you have a high ticket product and you want to sell more stuff because people, you know, it's tough to take the money out of their bank for, um, you know, sometimes what can be a rather large investment, which is going to definitely produce an ROI as long as they do the work, it's going to be a return on investment there. However, a lot of people just don't have the additional liquidity to, to get that money to invest in themselves and they want to. Um, so we can help them get the financing to buy more of your high ticket stuff. Um, we also do large commercial real estate deals. Uh, we, we fund the cannabis industry quite a bit. Um, and basically we're a, a, a one-stop shop for all of your money needs. That's awesome. And now what got you started in that? Because I mean, you know, that's not something I think generally people just wake up and saying, you know what, I just want, I just want to give people money. <laughs> so they can so they can make their dreams a reality you know what i mean <laughs> totally um so just you know everything out there on the table we are a brokerage right so the money's not ours we are um the ones that know exactly which bank to pair you with when you come into our marketplace because if you try and go online and look up like you know, get a business loan or something, you're going to be bombarded and overwhelmed with the amount of information that is out there. And, you know, you're going to try and study as much as you can. However, um, it's not going to be as effective as coming to us who have been doing this for a while. And, you know, we're going to know as soon as you tell us your use of funds and your other qualifying answers, 
um, exactly what to match you with so that the um, so that so that you can move forward and grow in your business and get the money you need as fast faster than um, if you're to do it on your own. Um, and what what was the question again, Stace? No, you hit it. That was it. Like, how did you get into? Well, I mean, how did you get into doing that? That would be the mm -hmm. the question because again, you clarified a brokerage, obviously, right? That's the value of working with an expert in anything that you know we are trying to do, whether it's working with an expert in insurance, investing, anything like that. I mean, working with someone like you who is an expert in funding your business. Mm -hmm. So then, how did you get into? Right. That. That's that's the part of the question that I forgot. So I got lucky. Um, I knew that I was worth more than what I was getting at my salary job, which wasn't bad. I mean, I went from um, an inside sales role when I first graduated college. You know, I got really lucky to go to college to, to and get out of where I grew up. But you know, we'll get into that when we meet my thing here um and i got into inside sales and then I, I was an account manager at a enterprise company you know making like 90 grand a year plus commission with benefits and stuff and it was you know to to anyone else awesome um but i i personally thought that i i, I knew that i was capable of more um so i was posting a lot of content um even though i didn't have much intention when posting that content then as much as I do now, because I, you know, a lot of the content that I put out there now is very intentional based. Um, and, and then sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll like drop a dad joke every once in a while. Cause I think they're funny. Um, <laughs> and I was just putting it out there just because I feel like I, I was just, you know, the, the world was just like, um, just moving in a, in a circle and, and there were so many cogs in the wheel and I just didn't want to be one of those cogs. Um, you know, I wanted, I wanted to be my own wheel, right? Uh, so I did a Facebook Live one day right after quitting my job. Um, <laughs> it, it went viral. I got like over like a thousand likes um, and got shared a bunch. Um, and I was lucky enough to uh, know a couple of people in this industry already. Uh, so somebody made a course that I took about the industry. And that person had like 10, 12 years of experience in, in the financing industry too. So I got to learn under him for about a year and a half, um, working after quitting my job, working commission only, um, you know, being fully out there in the field and eating what you kill, right? So, you know, so to speak is an analogy. Um, so I worked under him for a year and a half, and then I worked with two more companies after that um, before I felt the confidence um, in myself to start my own company. And, and frankly, I should have done it a, a long time ago, but it just took me a while to um, really feel like, all right, like, you know, this doesn't work. Why have I worked for three separate companies over the last, you know, however many years I've been doing this, let me try and do it on my own. <laughs> you know, I know how to do it. Um, and it was very difficult at the beginning. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, it was, it was really hard to uh, not be able to take any of your past business uh, because, you know, there are agreements and stuff in place where I can, you know, um, leverage any business that I had originated with the other three places and just start from scratch. Um, but dude, it is, it's, it is worth it so much. Like I, you know, there, there have been a lot of ups and downs and I've frankly never been happier than I am right now. Like my buddy actually just took over a coffee shop uh, here in Astoria. Um, the owner was like, you know, I want a partner and he, he's got ownership of the coffee shop now just from sweat labor. And he's there every day. And this has been like three weeks, I think, or a month. And from the very beginning, I was like, dude, you are going to want to quit two weeks in. You're going to want to quit three weeks in. You're going to want to quit a month in. I'm telling you, if you show up consistently for six months, a year, two years, you are going to end up being so happy. 
that you did that work. But I'm telling you, you're going to want to quit before that happens a lot. <laughs> you know, uh, embracing the course, suck. Learned from a bunch of different people. I took all the good things that I liked from all of those different people. I dropped all the bad things that I didn't like from all of those people. And I made the small biz heroes. I love it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. So let's get into a bit about your story. I know you have a really interesting backstory that it makes you so passionate about um, mindset and vulnerability and success and doing the inner work. So, and since this is what it means to be influential is totally an inside job, I would love to know and I'm sure the audience would love to know your story. Cool. So, I mean, I guess I'll start from the beginning. So I was born in Queens Hospital. <laughs> um, I was raised in Yonkers, New York. Um, and my parents got divorced when I was eight. Um, you know, the separation was not an ideal one for your kids. You know, if you guys are getting divorced and you're listening to this, please don't argue in front of your kids. Take it to another room. Close the door. You know, and I know that passion can can really get in the way of logic. And obviously, we make a lot of our decisions based on emotion and then justify them with logic. But please don't fight in front of your kids, right? Because they, they remember that shit. They, they, you are what they take in, you know, and, and they are, you know, you um, and what you give them to be, right? So... Um, they got divorced when I was eight. My mother won custody. Um, my father would see us every other weekend, uh, my little brother and I, and I also have two older siblings. Uh, they were in college at the time. Um, and, you know, I had a, a mother was abusive physically, mentally. Um, I would be gone for like months at a time. And don't get me wrong, I was a handful of a kid. Like, uh, you know, she, she definitely had quite a lot to deal with you know so she took me to like some doctors tried putting me on some calm calm the kid down drugs um you know so so that that happened for like a few months until i was like these i don't like these and, and i just stopped taking them without permission <laughs> um and then um you know i hit about 15 years old and i'm you know i'm 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 doing drugs at this point with like kids twice my age, guys twice my age, but I mean, I, I'm twice my age at of 15 now, and I will say that those guys that I was doing drugs with were definitely kids, they were not men, um, they had a very childish mindset, um, you know, and all of the people that I surrounded myself with, or called my friends, they weren't, um, you know, they didn't have my best interest in mind, they didn't, want to see me succeed um they weren't even people that i could trust like, they were people that i had to like you know make sure that like didn't take money out of my wallet that i called my fucking friends like can <laughs> you believe that um so anyway lots of different schools um went to a went to a catholic school to start off high school i i ended up getting expelled four months in for going up to the roof and the roof actually broke the skylight that I was sitting on because I went up with a friend and my friend sat on the skylight. You know, I sat across from her on another skylight. I'm, I'm like twice the size of my friend. <laughs> and the skylight broke and I fell 15 feet through two sheets of glass onto a chair in a forbidden zone of the Catholic school. I wake up surrounded by 13 um statues of the mother of you know mother Teresa or mother of mary um i don't know who the statues were of i'm not that religious um but you know i thought i was dead i was like okay this 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 is it right you know these are these are what the statues are for like this where where's the wall where's the gate you know um hopefully <laughs> and then um I went to a public school after that. Um, I also went to um, a facility called Daytop, uh, which is which is like a, a rehab school. 
um, where, you know, it's like an outpatient rehab that my mother checked me into, um, that also you get to continue your high school education. Um, now there was a certain point where my mother also checked me into an inpatient for a month. Um, when I was just, I was just smoking weed for the most part. And, you know, she didn't really know about the other stuff I was doing. Um, however, you know, she, she might have because she, she, she was in, and she's in AA and NA. Uh, so, you know, she, she has her own experience. Uh, so she probably knew a lot more than she was letting on to me. Um, but anyway, like three quarters of the drive to the inpatient, she tells me that we're going to Six Flags until, you know, I find out that we're going to rehab that I'm going to be having to stay at for a month. Um, but all of those experiences led me to where I am today. Um, when I was 16, we got into a little debacle where my finger here got twisted by her um, and fractured in a couple of places. And she didn't want to take me to the hospital because she didn't want to get her, her, her in trouble, which I, you know, I don't blame. And my mother's, my mother and I have a great relationship today for anybody that's listening. Um, you know, we both were a little much back then and, and we both you know, are a little much right now in, in good ways as well, but we've, we've come to good terms just so everybody knows. Um, so my vice principal saw that my thumb was the size of a baseball bat and I was obviously scared to tell him how it happened. He called my dad. My dad drove into Manhattan or in from Manhattan to high school to take me to the hospital. And I go to the hospital get the fracture fixed um and then my dad fights for custody of me and wins and then i moved to manhattan that's uh it's around like 16 and i went to a school called food and finance because i wanted to be a cook at the time i love food and i love cooking still do um and these teachers man like i was not a nice i was like not a good kid like if i was a teacher i would have not liked me but these teachers loved me they saw something in me where they made sure that like I took my regents, I, I did well and you know I did all my assignments and um they got me away. You know, they, they got me into a college and I went to upstate New York for college where I got into like, you know, a couple of fights like in the first like three months because like I thought that's what you needed to do in order to, for people not to pick on you. Right? That's oh, it's like prison rules. Yeah, that's just the life that I was raised in. And, you know, I, I, I realized when I was up there that I have hated my life this entire time. I love kindness. I love love. Um, and I, I love spreading it. And, you know, I, I didn't realize that that was even an option until I went to a place where people, you know, you didn't have to look behind your back. You know, it took me a long time to actually be able to trust anybody. And now, you know, I trust you until you give me a reason not to. Um, and then went through college, had a great time, um, bunch of fraternity, um, had some excellent friends, you know, actual friendships for once, which was really nice and went into the real world and, and really got to know who I was and who I wanted to be in college, you know, and even, even to this day, we're still figuring out who we want to be, right? We always will be every day trying to get better. Um, but I'm, I, I definitely know I'm much more who I want to be today than I was yesterday. And especially than I was 10 years ago in, in college. Um, and after then I got a, I got a job at a, at a bar, bar backing while I was looking for a sales job or thing, figuring out what I wanted to do. I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. I just knew that college was awesome and that people are nice and that they were hot girls. Um, and that's, that's all I knew, right? Um, so I, was, I, I, I studied psychology with a double minor in economics and business administration. Cause I was like, I'm just gonna study all the things that I enjoy learning about. And I really liked psychology a lot because I was just like, all right, I got to figure out what got fucked up and where in my life. <laughs> so the adolescent and childhood development classes really helped put a perspective around that uh, for me too. 
um, which was really cool. So, you know, had those salary jobs, had uh, a, a good life, you know, that, that would be seen by anybody else, $5,000 a month with benefits, that's after taxes, right? Um, but then just wanted more. And, you know, I, I've certainly achieved that more and I definitely want even more now. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. That is such a phenomenal story, right? Coming from, you know, hardship, hardship and trauma and, you know, really being able to step into our best selves because we had, we had community that we could learn something different. We had the ability to have people, you know, see something in us before we could to where we could let the walls yeah. down. Right. And that's and such a powerful process. And, and surrounding those other people like you, people like our apex, you know, executives and entrepreneurs only makes it better. Um, and, and really helps, helps us uh, know that there are people like us that want more. Um, and it's good to know that and surround yourself with people like that because if you are surrounding yourself with the people that you grew up with chances are you know there's you're there and and you're on this level like you're wanting to be an entrepreneur or you are an entrepreneur chances are nine out of ten of your friends that you grew up with aren't and they just aren't going to be on that level which is okay you can still love them you can still um you know go hang out with them however you know you can't talk about things like business and leveling up and finding your flow in this world with them as well as you can with the people that are on your level of being conscious of that subconscious and wanting to get more <laughs> yeah absolutely totally well now is the perfect time for a quick break and we will come back to finish this amazing or continue this amazing conversation and uh, dive a little deeper so stay tuned go deeper by grabbing your copy of my best-selling book be a boss and fire that bitch by going to fire that bitch book.com <sighs> All right, welcome back as we continue this amazingly deep conversation with Zach Siegel. So we were just talking about, I mean, his powerful and amazing story and how it really highlights a lot of what I talk about with that beautiful alpha energy, how when we're kids, it's so misunderstood. We end up, you know, getting the diagnoses of like ADD, ADHD, we're misfits, you know, we're rebels, we're troublemakers. We don't tend to fit into a lot of social groups. And then at the same time, we're kind of friends with everybody, right? And a lot of the stuff that we grow up with, we end up um, just internalizing a lot because that alpha energy is this high empathy, high sensitivity, emotional sensitivity and energetic sensitivity balanced with this high level of energy and drive and this high sensation seeking. So when you put those two together, it can cause a lot of mischief and a lot of magic when we funnel it into something like entrepreneurship or athletics or something like that. But in why so many people like us are amazing entrepreneurs, but obviously it causes problems when we're younger. <laughs> and I see this a lot in all, you know, within our communities, and obviously we're in very similar, you know, we're in the same tribe and, and same community. And I see this at the highest levels, especially with the men, where, you know, because of the stigma associated with gender, that they've had to really reject that emotional and spiritual side of themselves, you know, not allow themselves to be vulnerable to share the emotions, to talk about that stuff. So they just kind of stay in that toxic masculinity because obviously the emotions, the feminine energy, and the more we balance, the more successful we are. So they get stuck in that hustle trap, you know, hiding in the hustle. How has getting comfortable with vulnerability and trust and flow and surrender, 
helped you in your journey to success? Well, one thing that my first uh, manager taught me that's really stuck with me to this day is we all piss in the same pot. And I was taught that because I was getting nervous when I was talking to higher level CEOs and CFOs. And so he's like, dude, they're humans too. And that applies to this as well um, because men have emotions too. And the fact is like, yeah, we can be alpha bosses, but um, you know, you can also share your vulnerability. You can also be vulnerable and have emotions you're a human. And the fact that not enough men are doing it is only making it so that less men do it. Because really, as men, we need to unite together and be okay with putting ourselves out there. Um, because there are way too many pent up emotions amongst uh, all men because of that stigma that we're supposed to be the pillar or we're supposed to be you know the rock and if for some reason that pillar seems flimsy you know we don't want to scare our loved ones by you know um, making them or, or allowing them to see a, a flimsy pillar that is holding up their lives right we don't want to be that person that's going to um, make them feel um, like there's you know, that there's something that's wrong with us, right? But at the same time, there's only that stigma because not enough men share, you know, and everybody is so worried about what everyone else is thinking about them that they keep it inside. But the fact of the matter is, everybody is way too busy thinking about what other people are thinking about them to be thinking about you. Isn't that some shit? Right? right um so being vulnerable has just allowed me to filter in the people that are meant to be in my life and the clients that are meant to be my clients and filter out the people that are not meant to be in my life and the referral partners that are not meant to be my partners you know and that's a good life guys because you know there's so many people out there trying to please everybody and trying to live by the standards of society that were given upon us you know who, who says that we need to do that you know why can't we be ourselves why can't we be our unapologetic selves and let people know when we're going through the motions like i i wanted to quit being an entrepreneur like probably every other week for the last three years <laughs> You know, it's that's back. the reality yeah like that just for me i know there are people listening to this right now that are just like shit him too <laughs> it fucking sucks i'm done i think i had that this morning as i was going through some emotional shit i'm just like <sighs> right like <laughs> and that's why we surround ourselves with people like like us you know um and it it, it helps a lot it, it really does well and i think too understanding removing the judgment around emotion and vulnerability as being a bad thing regardless of whether of just just for people you know that emotion sharing it sitting in it learning from it understanding what we're feeling that it's you know we've got this social and cultural norm that it's just avoid that it's bad you know because i see it even in the female alpha leaders that leadership as a whole has been focused on being in this hyper masculine toxic masculine energy like this is the only type of leadership right and we see it from all those old leadership trainings and kind of that you know for lack of a better term kind of the good old boys club type of leadership that there is this style and that that's the only way where the revolution today for people like us is that we get to be influential leaders or, you know, as I call it, influential leaders, where it's this beautiful balance of confidence and vulnerability, strength and authenticity. And your confidence in your vulnerability. Yeah. You know, if we had more men that were more confident about being uh, vulnerable about their emotions, then it would be less of a stigma for, um, you know, men not to be vulnerable about their emotions or men to be vulnerable about them. 
Um, and then, you know, the good old boys club, like it sucks that a woman alpha leader needs to, you know, be able to, you know, hang with the boys or, or talk shit if, if need be, if she doesn't want to, um, in order to remain at the top. Like, like, why can't she just be her herself? Um, you know, she needs, she needs to know, like, you know, even more so than men, she needs to be stronger and a harder rock than the men that she's surrounded with on that level because of uh, the, the stigmas between women and men, you know, when really we're, we're all humans, like we should all be on the same level or the level that we work to be on. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. And, and, and I think too, clarifying, like more of a rock in terms of owning your identity and your power and your truth, not flexing or changing to fit into any external mask, role, mold, anything dictated by anyone else. The more solid you are in who, knowing your truth and identity without a doubt, the more power and influence you have in the world to create the change the impact, the legacy, the leadership, and the lifestyle you desire. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, there, like, there have to be, like, women out there in these leadership roles that get home, and they're just like, oh, finally, I can stop being a jerk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like, I, yeah. I, can, I can, I could let, I could let it, I could let it down for a second, you know, and that must suck. Yeah. Oh yeah, it does. It does. I mean, I see it all the time. I've had clients in that space, um, both men and women, and that are like, I'm tired of wearing this mask of who everyone expects me to be as a leader. And I need time for me to step into doing it my way. Right. Right. And, right? and, and that's so much more powerful. Exactly. And that's like, goes back to what I was saying before about how when you do it your way, like not everybody's gonna like your way, man. You gotta accept that. But when you do it your way, you're gonna attract the people that are meant to be there, that are there because they were attracted to the way that you were doing it by you doing you. You know, when you're trying to appeal to everybody, you're you're not gonna end up attracting the people that are meant to be there for you. So true, right? You are not for everyone. And just the more you own your expert, the, your story, who you are and how you've earned the right to share your wisdom because you failed a million times over and learned the lessons, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you can share that genius and, and be the leader in your own way. And again, it's like, you can just really, it's just, that's how we create generational impact. Right? where we go from legacy to legendary, the more we are in our true authentic selves. And it's just a beautiful balanced place to be. So what is next for you and where can everyone find you? Um, I was just, just going to say, you never hear of, um, you know, somebody that leaves a legacy that doesn't, you know, that, that everybody liked, right? You know? Um, except, except, you know, even, even the most famous guy in, in history got, got murdered on a cross, right? Um, yeah, it's gonna, you're gonna attract haters if you're being that disruptor, but that's how you become legendary. That's how everyone remembers you because you were willing to go against the status quo and shift the paradigms and piss people off. You've got to be bold enough to be, to be willing to piss people off. I know I do. All the time. People are like, why do you have to kiss so much? I'm like, because it's who I am. Yeah. And you know, like why, why do you say these like big truth bombs? And I'm like, because your subconscious needs to hear it. Clearly, that's why it's upsetting you. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm hiring salespeople. Um, we, we're putting our standard operating procedures in place. You know, it's been me and my, and my admins uh, for a while now. And, you know, I've always had a bit of a hesitation of hiring salespeople, you know, and I've just turned them into referral partners and, and stuff instead of actually hiring out a team. Um, because for a while there, I was like, you know, 
imposter syndrome, like who wants to work for me, right? When in actuality, you know, now that, you know, we, we have momentum and um, the, the revenue that we're doing is, is, is great, um, I'm seeing like, this is an amazing opportunity for anybody um, that would be interested in getting into the commercial lending space. Um, so now that those limiting beliefs are stomped out, uh, we are hiring salespeople. You know, I want to have uh, at least five by the end of July. And we are also, um, you know, going to be hiring some more administrators and, and back-end people to, to run, like, the finance aspect of things, like, you know, conversion ratios and, and you know, how many how much revenue we're getting per deal and making sure that not only are clients getting taken for the first transaction, but that they're being nurtured because, you know, business doesn't stop after you get one loan or, or you know, if you want to get another one for commercial real estate building or for a, um, for inventory or for, you know, payroll or whatever it might be, um, for a kangaroo, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a zoo, um, you're going to want somebody that has that relationship with that you can trust will take the best care of you, uh, regardless of where you're at in your business. So we're not transactional by any means. We like to, you know, on average, we do at least five transactions with our clients, um, on average and that's what makes my job so fulfilling and right now it is a job because i don't have a sales team yet <laughs> and so we're working on turning this job that i've created into a business and surrounding myself with people like stacy you know people in a lot of our our circles and and people that have done it before people that have made the mistakes people that have literally created a a bona fide job for themselves as an entrepreneur, right? And and so we're able to enhance and speed up our learning curve, thankfully due to the internet and meeting all these great people and getting to learn from their mistakes, which, you know, I'm just so grateful for. Um, and if you wanna find me, all you gotta do is go to applyforanybusinessloan.com. Again, that's oh. apply for any business loan dot com um also zachary j siegel uh you can email us funding at small biz heroes biz is spelt with a z so that's funding f-u-n-d-i-n-g at small b-i-z h-e-r-o-e-s dot u-s not dot com it's dot u-s uh so those are the ways that you can find me um you know, all, all of my social links are on that apply for any business loan.com page at the bottom there. Uh, if you guys want to follow me, I'm, I'm always open to connecting with people and uh, getting to know them. And especially if, um, you know, you listen to Stacy, that means that you're probably my type of person and that I would fuck with you as a friend. Uh, so you can definitely feel free to reach out um, and, and, you know, connect um, any, anyway. Well, and, and the fact that, you know, getting that funding for either their business um, as it is, or just expanding or investing in themselves, right? I mean, because again, you know, the coaching industry uh, is definitely one of those industries that it's hard to get a, a loan for. And that's something that you guys can specialize in, which is awesome yeah. that you fund all those different things. So fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your powerful story and yeah. insights any final thoughts for the listeners today yeah um just be be a nice person it's a lot nicer to be nice and um, if you were listening to my story you know i didn't figure that out until i was like 23 24 years old so it's very strong in terms of my core values for my company is be kind it's a lot nicer to be nice i love it that is amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been such a wonderful, wonderful conversation. And of course, for those of you who are listening, as always, remember you are enough. Be sure to like, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening. And I will see you 
in the next episode.